four. So five squares. And mm -hmm. I just remembered the rule, the 300 rule that you had in the video. Mm -hmm. So I did it based on it, um, which gives 60. Mm -hmm. And um, then um, I did uh, the um, equifacing method to find out the position Axis. of the axis, yeah. Uh, by um, defining the equiphasic uh, one, which was in this case the most equiphasic was lead one. Um, okay, very good. And I normally the uh, pulled up the whole chart with the axis mm -hmm. and degrees, so uh, the lead one is horizontal, so zero degrees. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, perpendicular to that one is either plus uh, 90 or uh, minus 90 degrees. But mm -hmm. if you look at the AVF, which is perpendicular mm -hmm. to it, it's mm -hmm. positive, so it's going to be plus 90 degrees. Okay, very good. <clears throat> and do you have PVS in front of every R? Uh, yeah. So that meaning this is a normal sinus rhythm, including that the PR interval is normal as well. So that's a normal sinus rhythm because uh, we had, let's see, the arrhythmia as well. Okay, so doesn't matter. You have another chart. It's coming up when we talk about arrhythmias. Okay, it was great. Very good. Who has the 103? You can keep sharing your screen. I think that would be the best one. Okay, <clears throat> uh, I'll do it. Okay, thank you. Where did it appear here? Yeah, share uh, screen and go. Oh, I think maybe, maybe the first one, Anita. Is, is she back or not? Not yet. I cannot see her. No, I cannot see her. Okay, so let's go to 103. Okay, and the 103 goes to, who has 103? I do. Okay, so it's your turn. Yes. And Bianca um, is pointing the cursor, what you are saying. Okay, so I don't have to share my screen. All right. Oh, um, if you want, you can do it. I mean, okay. uh, Bianca will be very happy about it. Let's share. Okay. So, all right. Good. Yeah. So, what we have here is um. But we don't see anything except you. Oh, we don't see yet. Yeah, you're a nice guy. It's a handsome guy, so it's okay. Except we are interested in ECG, unless you are showing your own ECG, <laughs> that would be fine. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sure now. Can you say it? I don't know who is going to share, but uh, yes, we can see it. Okay. All right. So um um to determine to determine the um axis of this ECG, I looked at not the axis one. first, not the axis first, rhythmicity. Is it rhythmic or not? Step okay, by think, step. Okay, it's um it's too fast, so it has a rate of um. Okay, so that's means rate one fifty. Okay, but the rate is fast, so it means hundred and fifty bit per bits per minute. Okay. Yes. Now you can talk about the axis. Okay. All right. So first of all, I looked at lead one. Um, lead one is positive. Then. Um, I looked at lead um AVF, mm -hmm. and AVF is also positive. And mm -hmm. when both lead one and AVF are both pos positive, then it means we have a normal axis. Very good, very good. Okay, now one thing, because none of them is equiphasic. All right, so this is how 
you use this quarter approaching because the one positive, AVF positive, that should be normal. But what could be the axis? Basically, the biggest one should be parallel with the main electrical axis. So looking at one, two, three, which is the biggest one, number two. two. So the axis is close to 60. Okay, now let's think a little bit. 60 exactly in the middle of between zero and 120. So if you had exactly 60, that meaning that the two reflection, one and number three should be equal. So the positivity one and three should be equal if you had exactly in the middle of this axis. But because one, a little bit positive, meaning that you are getting closer to one. So let's see, it's not 60, it's maybe 50. Okay. Okay. Everybody understood? Okay, great. And do we see P waves in front of every P, uh, every QRS complex? Uh, for lead, number, lead number two, the, the biggest one usually, and AVR. Lead number two is positive, AVR is negative, so that's what originated from the sinus, not? And because every P looks the same and it's rhythmic one and nice round shape, yes, this is sinus written. And because it's tachycardic, it's called sinus. No. Sinus, sinus, sinus tachycardia. It's not sinus normal, tachycardia. it's sinus tachycardia. Okay, good. All right, 104. Who has 104? It's me. Okay. Can you share your screen? Almost. Hmm, difficult problem. Oh, I'm, I, I'm trying to do it. Okay, a little green button, share screen. Punch it. Yeah, yeah, I and punch it, it but... But it says that you have to give permission to the computer to share this data, yes? Yes. Okay. Don't do it because if you let the computer using your data after you have to log out and log back again. So let's share okay. Bianca. Okay, Bianca, please share it. And he's going to say it. And after that, you can give the permission. And after maybe log out and log back again, and that will be fine. Okay, Bianca, please. See, Bianca is an IT expert. <clears throat> First of all, uh, Professor, I'm sorry that we... I did it. That I did it for the second seminar one, but I did it quickly for that. Okay, but you can do it right now. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So. Okay. Rhythmic um, or not? It's irregular rhythmic. Very good. That's irregular. Okay. <laughs> And I calculate by 300 mesut and this can be 75. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Around 75, all right. Yeah. And I found the axis by the equipasic method because the lead one is equipasic, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I checked the ABF that it is the positive, so it's, I guess it's... Um, 90 degrees. Okay. Now, quickly, you said arrhythmia. Do we see P waves in front of every QRS? Yes, I can check it. Oh, check it. Lead uh, number two should be checked. And if you are, 
So you do see positive P waves in lead number two. Those P's look the same, PR looks the same, and the P, P, P written follows the QRS complexes. And if you do see that we do have a longer gap, shorter, 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 longer gap. So it's meaning that possible that's a breathing arrhythmia. That's a breathing arrhythmia, high you inspire and expire, and this is how the rate is fasting and slowing down. So that's a respiratory arrhythmia, so it's a sinus arrhythmia. Okay, very good. Now let's see the next one. Okay, please, Bianca. 105, who has this? That's me. Okay, Enrique. Okay. Yes, uh, well, it's also arrhythmic. Mm -hmm. So well, when you said I got um I, I in four seconds I count the amount of beats. Okay, it's good. So it's, uh, it's around ninety beats per minute. Possible. Okay. And then when we for the axis, I first looked at the first lead, which is positive, so it means uh -huh. it's towards the left. Okay. And then I, and then I looked at ABF, which is okay. negative. Very that would good. tell us that it's it's between zero and minus ninety. Okay. So then, so then I looked at lead two, which is more or less positive. It's almost almost the acuphasic. All right. And because of that, I th I think that it's between minus thirty and zero. It's a left deviation. If it good. were negative, it, if Very it were negative, good. that should be less than minus thirty. Though that'd be a pathological left deviation, but it's not. Okay. Now, why is arrhythmic? It's possible it's a respiratory one as well because there's P waves. No, 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 no. Now, if you get closer, can you magnify it, Bianca? Okay, thank you. Now, let's <clears throat> look at lead number two. The first P, second, third, fourth, and so on, and so on. And you do see that some beat came earlier. Let's see, this is one, two. Uh, so the third one and the fifth one came earlier and yep. then another one and the p's are not the same so it's meaning these are atrial premature bits okay atrial okay. premature bits now if you go a little bit further in the chest leads go to the chest lead bianca please the v1 v2 v5 the v1 i think okay good let's go all right now look at the last bit that you can see this is not the same as others. So they are wider and completely different. And the T wave is inverted, exactly opposite of the QRS complex. So meaning that these are, what kind of, what is the origin of this bit? Premature. Premature, ventricular. These are the ventricular because the ventricle is not activated through the normal conducting system. It is activated through the muscle. This is why it's wider and the repulsation is different. Now we do have an additional one in the middle. This looks like an M shape. Okay, this is the M shape. Let's in V1, please go up Bianca to V1. Okay, in the next seminar, we will have the conduction abnormalities because we do see P waves in front of it, but the QRS complex is changed and that's be a right bundle branch block, but so far you don't need to know it. So that's kind of arrhythmia is a multifocal atrial premature bits plus a ventricular premature bit and whatever said, said it's correct. Very good. You will understand later on, don't worry. Now let's go on, and that should be the next one, 106. Who has 106? Uh, Professor, hey, I have a... Wait, 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 wait. Who has a question? Somebody has a question. I have a question. Uh, okay. How do you know which of the beats is a premature beat? Okay. What is the criteria for the premature beat? Should come earlier. So if you go back, please go back, Bianca, to the previous one. So, for example, by looking at this one, Let's look at lead number two, for example. One, two, three, the third one. So you see that the third bit, so the gap between the RR, the first RR, and the next RR is not the same. The second RR is closer to each other. So that means that's a period, and followed by a compensatory pause and longer interval. That meaning that that's a premature bit, okay? 
So the criteria for a premature beat that should come earlier and followed by a compensatory pause. This is how I know that the premature beat. And that's in time, how I categorize the premature beats as the premature beat. Now let's look at the location of the yeah. premature beat. Is it comp like fully compensated or like, uh, how do we see the compensations here? Okay, all right. That's uh, basically a little bit difficult to understand here because you don't have normal two Rs. But if you do see that first R, R interval, that one, two, three, four, almost four squares, okay? Four big squares. So it's meaning that two, four is eight squares, okay? Eight squares. Now, you have to look count the first one. So I'm meaning that the third QRS complex, okay? Um, how can I, okay, uh, I think you can share somehow your cursor and I can use it. So please go up. I think it's a upper panel and you see some dots and after you can say remote or something. You can uh, give me the the Oh yeah. I yeah, can. control, yes. Give me the control, okay. Oh, I okay, I have it. Okay. Possible, okay. click start, okay. Now I, you can see what I'm doing, yes? Uh, no, I can see my mouse, but I can't see yours you cannot see and where is your mouse uh in middle this this is your mouse it's moving not i don't see anything moving oh you don't see anything moving wow because it says that you are controlling bianca's screen and looks like i'm not going to control anything because you don't see it <sighs> Okay, don't worry. Somehow I will figure out how can we do this one. Okay, let's see the best one. Okay. Somehow I had a problem with this. Okay, good, very good. All right. That was 105, yes, 105. Okay, Bianca, I'm stopping your sharing. And now you do see my cursor, yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Now let's look this one. Okay, this is the first RR that should be normal. This is earlier bit, so that's an early coming bit, what we have here. And this is the compensatory pause that we do have after that. So you have to summarize this and this. So it's meaning that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So we have seven squares, okay? Wait a minute. Ah, yes. Yes, okay, so starting here, ending here. Can you see it? Oh, but I disappears. Why is vanishing? Okay, now it's good. Now, all right, so this is one, and this is the second one. Again, vanishing. Okay, one and the last one. All right. You have to count the interval between these because that will include this is the coupling time, this is the first. This is how you know that this beat came earlier. And the second one, that is called the compensatory pause. Now, you have to add these two intervals together. And we said that the normal RR interval is this one. Okay, that's a normal one RR interval. 
and we have to take this twice. So it's meaning that this is four. So two times four, that means that's eight. So we do have a normal RR interval of eight squares. And because when we did have a premature bit, that only together with the compensatory pass take out about seven squares only. So it's meaning that this premature bit is undercompensated. And what you had in the videos, every supraventricular premature bit is undercompensated. Okay? Thank you. It's understandable. Okay, good. Now let's move on. Uh, yes. One last question. Uh, when okay. calculating the beats per minute, uh, which RR intervals do you take? Or do you take the entire thing, for example, in arrhythmias? Okay. In this case, when we do have arrhythmia, as the presenter said, it's counting a longer interval. These are one seconds. Can you see these little darker dots? Maybe I can magnify a little bit. Okay. Yes, possible. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm closing it. Okay, all right. So here is the black mark. Yes, this is one second, two second, three second, four second. Let's so we have four seconds. Okay, four seconds. And how many bits we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we do have four seconds and we had six bits. So it's meaning 60 seconds, we have 15 times more. So it means 15 times six, and that should be 90. 90 bit per minute. This is what the presenter said. It's clear? And of course, if you count, for example, the rate here, that's be different one because let's see one, two, three, four, five, seven. So in this interval, seven times 15, that making 105. So this is meaning that the rates are varies. So depending when you measure it. It's clear? Yeah. Uh, so when measuring the heartbeats, does it matter which lead? Do we use, or should we use, uh, for example, from lead one to lead three? Doesn't matter which one that you are using. Doesn't matter. The best, especially here, as you see here, six recorded at the same time. So one to AVF recorded at the same time, and V1 and V6 recorded another time. So it's not the same. But you can use any of it to count the heart rate. Doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Now let's uh, see the next one. The next one is uh, 106. I'm keeping this one and I can point it and I can show what I want to show. Okay, now tell me your story. Uh, so here we have irregular rhythm. Mm -hmm. And the beats are between 100 and 100. Okay, so basically stachycardic for sure, we can see it, and arrhythmic, as you said, okay. Uh -huh. And for the axis, uh, the led to is equiphasic, and the uh, if you want to find the perpendicular lead, lead it's the um, AVL. So a a v well, AVL, a little bit positive, if I say that's a little bit positive. I would say that the smallest one is the lead number three. That should be the smallest one. Okay, so we, we consider lead three as a equiphasic. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and uh, so if the lead three is equiphasic, the perpendicular one is the uh, AVR. Uh, AVR has an extreme axis uh, deviation. 
So the heart has an extreme excess that no, 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 no. Okay. okay. When you had lead number three is equiphysical. Okay, let's let's draw it. Okay, I'm drawing. This is lead number one. This is lead number two. Uh -huh. And this is lead number three. Okay? Yes. Now, what is perpendicular to lead number three? AVR. One is AVR, okay, yes, okay, AVR, or 30. Uh -huh. Okay, 30 mm -hmm. degrees. Now, if you had AVR, AVR mm -hmm. should be positive, but AVR is negative, showing yes. that you are at 30. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, so that so meaning this is close to 30. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, left axis deviation? No, that's a normal axis. Oh, normal axis, okay. Normal, because lead number one, positive, AVF is positive, normal, that's it. This is how you start. The first one, look at one and AVF, both positive, normal. You don't need to do anything else. That's it. Uh -huh, okay. All right. Okay, very good. Now, however, we do see that we do have arrhythmia. What mm -hmm. do you think? Why do we have arrhythmia? Uh, I think uh, this patient has an atrial fibrillation. No, well, no. 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 Because, because yeah. here, if you do see, for example, we have P waves. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we do have P waves in front of the QRS complexes, but these P's are not the same. So they are changing. Mm -hmm. So this is a multifocal atrial tachycardia that we have. This is why it's a rhythmic one. But very good if you had no P waves that you could say that this is an atrial fibrillation. But in this case, that's a multifocal atrial tachycardia or MAT, MAT. All right. Good. Let's look at, ah, yes. Who has 107? It's me. Okay. Yes. So starting with the rhythmic, um, overall, I would say it's not rhythmic. Yes. And um, for the heart rate, I use the lead one, which is seven beats per five seconds. Mm -hmm. So overall, it's 84 beats per minute. Okay, good. Yes. And for access... I use equifacic approach. And if you see the AVL on the right in the middle, mm -hmm. um, since AVL is a negative 30 and mm -hmm. uh, 90 degree of that would be lead two, which shows positive 60. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes. Okay. And uh, do, uh, do we see P waves? P waves, I don't see P waves. Okay, and if you do not see P wave, what is your diagnosis? So it would be, could it be yeah, yeah. flutter? No? No, 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 no. In flutter, if you had a flutter, you should see this kind of wave. Oh, okay. okay. That's so... a, the flutter waves. And if you do not see any, that meaning arrhythmia, no P wave, Atrial, wait, so it is a arrhythmia. Yeah, that's arrhythmia, atrial fibrillation, atrial fibrillation. Okay, so arrhythmia, no P wave, atrial fibrillation, immediately. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Good. Very good. Okay. Perhaps. Yes? Excuse me, I have a question regarding the 106. Okay. In lead one, uh, are those um, between the QRs complex, are those the T waves or P waves? P, T, 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 these are T waves. Possible, these are T waves. Now, so if you do, okay, if you want to find the P waves, so there, there are P's or not, let's mm -hmm. look at any leads, but the best one to looking at the V1, because V1 is the closest to the atriums. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So for the P wave found, if you want, want to find the P wave, we should look at the V1 first. 
Yes, yes, okay. yes. Thank but you can use any leads. For example, here in AVF, you can see nicely the P waves, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, professor, can I ask yes. you uh, yes. a question uh, about the 104? That okay, guys, I'm go making... back to 104. Yes. It's just a quick question that you said that for the sure is this uh, compensated? One? No, no, no. This is 104 is not. That's a breathing arrhythmia. That's a sinus arrhythmia. This is but, not premature beats. Okay. So it's a, the interval. If you are checking the interval, they are getting shorter and after that, I'm getting a little bit longer. Yeah. So, so it looks like... No, it is not. That's a breathing arrhythmia because you do see P, the same kind of P waves in front of every QRS. It's not changing. And the rate or the distance between the PP is the same as an RR. So these are not premature bits. Okay, this is what I want to say. When we are talking about a premature bit formation, we should yeah. go to the next one. The next one, okay, I'm going to the next one. That's a 105. Okay, now that's yeah. a, that, that's a, this is, you can see, that's a premature bit right here. Because this distance is longer than this distance. And after followed by the longer one, that's called a compensatory pause. And whether this is a undercompensated, compensated or whatever, you have to compare two R's, two normal R's, okay, to the sum of R1 plus R2. Okay. So two is the yeah. Okay. So two is the difference. In, yeah. yeah. This is what is compensating. If it's good mm -hmm. compensate to two hours, that's meaning it's fully compensated. So the average rate doesn't change. However, mm -hmm. if it's good not, that's undercompensated. So the rate is fastening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, we had a hundred and uh, I think. Oops. 107 and 8 is coming up. Who has 108? I don't know whether we do have it or not. Uh, I have. Okay, your turn. Uh, so first is uh, irregular. And uh, there is four peaks in every four seconds. So the base is around 100 per minute. I don't think that we do have over 100. This rate is, should be normal if I'm counting it. Now, this is arrhythmia. Okay, so what you can do here, count the seconds. Okay, count, let's see, this is one second, two second, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, and six seconds, okay? Now we have six seconds. How many hours do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm not counting this one, but it doesn't matter, eight or seven. So the rate is 70 and 80. So it's still normal. Okay. Okay. All right. Go on. And the late one is positive and A wave F is positive. So it's normal axis. Okay. That's a normal axis. Again, you can see that lead number two is the biggest one. So it's close to 60. However, lead number three is bigger than lead number one. So now you can say that's 70. It's a little bit closer to lead number three. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is one. This is two. This is three. If you had this, that these two, one and three should be equal. But because it's closer to lead number three, this is why lead number three is bigger than lead number one. So it's meaning that it's around 70. Okay, now the question is, why do we have arrhythmia? What makes? Um, I think every fourth one is a irregular one. So I think it's... Uh... Uh -huh. No, quadrogemini. Quad, what kind of uh, beat we have here? I, I mean, like... Uh, 
the P exactly the opposite. Okay, in lead number two is not positive, but is negative. So that means that's a junctional bit. So the every fourth bit is a junctional premature bit because this is the heart, okay? This is the junction, all right? Now, if we had, oh, I'm changing the color. So if we do have a bit that coming out from the junction, the atrium activated upward, okay? And the ventricle the same way. So it's, the P should be opposite, but it's depending on whether the atrial activated first. In this case, you have a P wave in front of the QRS. If they activated the ventricle and an atrium simultaneously, the P should be inside the QRS complex. And if you activate the ventricle first and later on the atrium, you should see a negative P behind of the QRS complex. It's understandable. Yes. Okay, good. Um, teacher, teacher, can you repeat one more time? Okay. So because we are exactly at the middle of the atrial and ventricle, let's see, conjunction. This is why the impulse can go in both ways, upward and downward. Upward goes to the atrium, down to the ventricle. And depending on which particle is activated first, if we do have the first, the atrium is activated. That's meaning that we do have a P and a QRS. However, the P is opposite, as you see here. Now, if the atrium and the ventricle activate at the same time, simultaneously, the P is inside the QRS complex. You don't see any P wave. Another possibility, first, the ventricle activated, and later on, the atrium. So you have first the QRS complex, and later on in time, you have a negative P wave. Okay. If you go okay. and watch the videos, it's really explaining you again, again, again. But it's in time, you know, which comes first. If the atrium comes first, you have a P in front of the QRS. However, because it's activated the opposite way, the P be negative in lead number two, but in AVR, it should be positive, as you see here. Now, if you activate the same time, that's meaning that the P inside the QRS complex. If you activate first the ventricle, you have a QRS complex, and later on, you have a P wave, but that P be behind of the QRS, and that be negative. Okay. So, does it mean that it's not dominated by SAD. Well, it's meaning that there's a premature bit. There's every four bits a premature bit. It's meaning that you still have you still have a sinus rhythm, but this sinus rhythm interrupted by a junctional premature bit. Now, if we had no sinus impasse formation at all, and the junction is taking over, we have a junctional escape rhythm. But this is not the case here. Thank you. And of course, the QR is the same, the same narrow because the ventricle activated the same pattern with the bundle branches and protein fibers and everything. So it should be narrow. Okay. This is how you know that that's a supraventricle impulse formation. Supraventricle means everything above the ventricle, sinus, atrial, junctional, all of them is supraventricle. Okay, good. Now let's see. Uh, 109? Yes. Okay. Uh, first, for the rhythmic, I think it's arrhythmic. See okay. how uh, there's no stable rhythm. Okay, and you can see here, I, for example. Okay. And then... Um, I use the rule of 300 to find the beat per minute. Well, in this case, when you do have arrhythmia, it's very difficult to use this 300 
divided by the number of the squares. It's much better if you use this, let's see, uh, seconds. However, here, well, it's difficult to see what is five squares, okay? Maybe I can show it to you uh, what is five squares. Okay, for example, if I'm starting here, one, two, three, four, five, okay? So that means five. One, two, three, four, 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 five. I think it's enough. One, two, three, four, five. Another one. One, two, three, four, five. So that's six seconds. Okay. How many bits we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, meaning that the rate is 80. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Go on. Um, and I heard the lead to it looks the most equiphasic. Mm -hmm. So then for this, um, I found the lead that is um, 90 degrees, which is AVL from lead two. So okay. the QRS axis is negative 30, meaning from zero to negative 30, it's left deviation. Uh-huh. Okay, um, that's it. And what about the rate Do we have P waves? Um, for rhythm, I feel like there is a premature beat or- No. Can you point me which is out of order? That's a longer one, shorter one, longer. They're not the same in this one. So I do not see any kind of rhythmicity. I do not see that it's a shorter and after normal and shorter or low and nothing. It looks like you cannot point those bits that is out of order. So it means it's arrhythmia absoluta. So arrhythmia, no P wave. Again. Uh. Atrial fibrillation. Oh, Arrhythmia, no P wave, atrial fibrillation. If you do not see very nice round shape P wave, there is no P wave. Okay. Good. Let's move on. 110. Who has 110? Nobody. Wait a minute. I have to check 110. No, we have 116. Only the 116 we have. Okay. And 114 I have. 114. Good. Let's move to 114. Yes, it's your turn. Um. So I think the hard bit here is rhythmic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but heart rate is 120 beats per okay, minute. Okay, very uh, good. So that's tachycardia. Okay. Yeah, tachycardia. And so I use the quadrant method. Okay. Uh, first, I look at the lead number one, which is negative. Mm -hmm. um, then it's going to be like me. Uh, between 90 and 270 degrees. Okay, so it's, we are on the right side. Okay, yeah, on the right very side. good. Uh -huh. and, and AVF is positive. AVF is positive, so it's going to be at the bottom. <laughs> yes, so it's meaning that the quadrantic approach, you are somewhere here. Yes. Yeah, so okay. it's going to be right deviation. Yes, and AVR is equiphasic, so it's meaning that 120. Um, I mean, uh, 200, okay, this is, <laughs> yeah, the equiphasic is 120, okay, here, because you have 210, 210 yeah. as avia, and that's 120, so we had a extreme right deviation, okay, extreme right deviation. Uh, why okay. did you say it's extreme? 
because it's, it's over right. 100. It's over 100 for sure. Uh, it's 120. Uh, and the impulse, for, impulse is originated from the sinus. If you do see, because we do see P waves in front of so the So sinus tachycardia? Exactly. So we do have a sinus tachycardia. Okay. That's great. All right. Let's move on. Uh, 15. Anybody has 15? Can I go with the 113 first? 13? Yes. Can okay. I share my uh, screen, please? Yeah, for sure. I'm happy to let you share your screen. Oh, yeah. It's working? It's yeah, working. it's working almost. Almost, yes. Now, this is what I like and asking you to do the same. Let's make notes on ECG. You can write anything on the ECGs. That's very good. Okay. Now. So, first of all, uh, it shows the irregular RR at the value, the interval. Mm -hmm. So, it okay. shows the irregular heart rhythms. And okay. so, I count the, the number of the R, like within the like three to six seconds, but I count in these like totally six seconds. Which okay. shows the the large square shows the one second, so within a, a six seconds there are like totally nine r, mm -hmm. so we supposed to like multiply ten from the nine, mm -hmm. so the heart rate is ninety bpm, mm -hmm. and and this method can be applied in like regular rhythm as well as you mentioned in the YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And in case of the regular heart rate, we do have to divide from the 300 by the number of the R values. Mm -hmm. But as this is irregular heart rate, I just like uh, multiply the total R value from the six second. And I use the, the, co the quadrant approach, which mm -hmm. shows the the lead one shows the positive value, but okay. to be honest, for the lead two, I think it's slightly negative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And when we move on to the AVF, it, it shows the negative value, so it's extreme left deviation. Okay, and very good. The, the heart, the vector between the negative 30 to negative 90. It okay, can, very good. Uh, and but uh, uh, the vector like supposed to like be between the zero to ninety as it should be normal, but as as the vector is between the negative thirty to negative ninety, we call the extreme left deviation. Okay. And now in this case, rhythm, in yeah. this case, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Look at AVR because AVR can tell you whether you are at minus sixty or less mm -hmm. or more. If AVR positive, you are have between minus 60 and minus 90. If AVR is negative, you are between minus 60 and minus 30. Okay. Minus 60, very good, very good. Okay, and what about this arrhythmia? What could you figure out with this arrhythmia? What makes it arrhythmic? Um, so due to the like hypertrophy, it blocks. No, 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 no. Uh, um, hypertrophy uh, is not uh, arrhythmia. Um, you number yeah. the R's. You number the R's. Let's look at the fourth yeah. one. It's coming earlier. See? So that's a premature bit, and you do have a little P wave. So that's an atria premature bit. You can say that that's a frequent atria premature bit. That's it, period. Mm -hmm. Because you do have P. Number four, can you see in front of it? A little P, but it's different from others. Okay. Well, Sorry, I can't see your slide as I am sharing the, my slides. But okay, I uh, how, like, oh, I do it, I do it, don't worry. I do it, okay. if I can find it. <laughs> okay, number 13, yes, number 13, and I can, show you right now. 
One, two, three, four. And can you see this little R here? Yes. Okay. And because we do see this little R, it's meaning that it's originated from the atrium. Okay. It's coming from the atrium. So that's an atria premature bit. Okay. Uh, this is what, what we are talking about. Wait a minute. Drawing, drawing. And red. Okay. So this is a P. Okay. Now, if I'm going and showing, oops, I'm going here as well. See? The same. So it means we do have atria pretty much. Only. These P's are the same, except this and that one. But they because they look the mm -hmm. same, it means that they're unifocal because only one extra focus we have. Yeah, if you had different shape P waves that coming earlier, that means multifocal atria premature bit. But this is a unifocal atria premature bit formation that we have. You say that it's atrial because the P wave is positive? Because we do have P waves in front of the QRS complex, okay? And is lead number two is positive. This is why you could say that's an atrial one. Because first the atrium is activated, the act the activation is a P wave, and after the ventricle. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Which is the next one? Who has any? I had hundred and twelve. Hundred and. Hundred and twelve. Twelve. Okay. Good. Okay. It's right here. Yeah. Um, so I'd say this is rhythmic mm -hmm. and, um, to, so I calculated the heart rate using the rule of 300. So I calculated, like I um, counted three, um, big squares between the intervals. So mm -hmm. that would be a hundred beats per minute. Okay. Which, yeah, is on the higher side, I guess, but still regular. 100. And That's then okay. for the electrical... For the electrical axis, um, the I couldn't find the um, equiphasic one in the frontal uh, lens, so then I used the quadrant approach. Um, and L1 was negative and mm -hmm. ABF was positive, so it's a right deviation between mm -hmm. um, 19 and 180 degrees. And mm -hmm. to check mm -hmm. if it was extreme, I looked at um, AVR which was negative. So it shows that it was just a right deviation. It wasn't extreme. So it's between mm -hmm. 90 degrees and 110. Okay. And? Uh, yeah. And we do have P waves in front of every QRS. So that mm -hmm. means a sinus tachycardia. That's it. That's a sinus tachycardia. Okay. Hmm? Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> no, because we do have P waves in front of every QRSs, and because we have tachycardia, that's a sinus tachycardia. That's it. Okay. Okay, good. Anybody else for the first? Can I do 111? Why not? Um. So I think it's rhythmic, this one, and... For the heart rate, I used the rule of 300 and it counted five boxes. So that would make it about 60 beats per minute. Mm -hmm. And for the deviation, I used the quadrant approach. So mm -hmm. looking at lead one, um, it's positive and ABF is negative. So it's the left deviation. Mm -hmm. And to check whether it's extreme, I looked at lead two, which was negative. So it makes it an extreme left deviation. Mm -hmm. Very good. Negative 30 to negative 90. Yes, very good. Okay. Let's move to the next next one. I don't know whether you are still can see it or not. Can you see my screen that changed? Uh, professor, I, I still didn't do mine. <gasps> you haven't done yours? Can you see yeah, it? Um, yeah. Since we're Which going is yours? Back, I'm 116. 
It's right here. Yeah, it's this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, one second. So, uh, first of all, I noticed there's two ECGs at the two different timings. And uh, it's rhythmic. And uh, the, the, the beats per minute is around uh, 90, 90 beats per minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then what I did is found the uh, the axis. The axis is uh, normal. Uh, I okay. used the approach. The lead one is positive. Then uh, I looked at AVF. AVF was positive. Uh, so the normal axis should be from zero to 90. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed the there's the P waves. P waves are there. And what uh, I saw that the ST is elevated. Well, uh, but we haven't studied yet, but you are right completely. <laughs> yeah. So that's a ischemic. So that's a STEMI. So it's a myocardial MI at the beginning in the hyperacute phase. And here we have an acute phase. As, as you see here, we do have a pathological Q wave in AVF. This is why the axis is changed a little bit. Yes? Yeah. Because that's a later on. But this is far from now. Okay. But you are, you, you figured out very nicely. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, can you see this one? That's a 101. Can you see it? Uh, yes. Okay. Who has 101? This is arrhythmia. And 101, I think, should go to oh, uh, Anita. Anita is here? Or no? Okay. Bianca. Now you are here. Yeah, I will share my screen. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Wow, yes. So um, I forgot what I was about to say. Uh, just a second, I'll pull it up also on my iPad. So uh, first I'll start uh, with uh, the fact that it's rhythmic. Mm-hmm. Um, and the uh, heart rate is 120 uh, beats per minute. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, the axis is between 30 and 60 uh, degrees. Uh, I had a bit of drawing there. Very nice, very nice. Uh, I did it now with the quadrant method. Uh-huh. Uh, since like... Uh, it wasn't very equiphasic, like just here. And yeah, I wanted to try the other one. <laughs> and um, I don't know how to make it more specific because I only found out that it was between 30 and 60 degrees. Um, well, it's okay. Doesn't matter. It's uh, 30 degrees. It's more than good. But let's look at lead number three is equiphasic. Look at lead number three. Yeah. So, 30. That's it, period. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't, look, doesn't matter because the axis is a normal range. We cannot get anything out of the normal axis. So, doesn't matter. If you had extreme left deviation, now you can have some diagnosis made out of this axis deviation. But uh -oh. otherwise, it's not. Okay, go on. Uh, then I notice here that the QRS complex is uh, mm -hmm. much longer. It's uh, zero. Wider, 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 wider. Uh, it's zero point four seconds uh, mm -hmm. because two squares. And okay, wait, 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 wait. This is not the older QRSs. The first that is going upward, that's a QRS, and done, that's a T. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense now. Okay. Uh, but uh, I assume that it was ventricle premature beat because it's still mm -hmm. longer than it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. It's longer than 0 0.12 seconds. Okay. And I also went based on your video how... <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And I think it's the monofocal mm -hmm. one because it's uh, only one and then doesn't continue. Yeah, look the same. Yeah, and especially the shape look the same. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay. okay. Yes, anything else? Yeah, uh, then also it has tachycardic, like atrial tachycardic. Well, okay. Um, that, but... that can be sinus tachycardia. Yeah, that's what I'm like confused because you can't really see the P waves like just a bit, I think. Is oh, this... That's a little bit is still enough, not the size matter. So yeah. Okay. Uh, so all sinus right. Cardia. That, yeah, I have it here, sinus tachycardia. That's good. That's good. Very good. Thank you. That was very good. Okay, let's see then others. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, one well, that was one or okay, one or three. Anybody else? Who has the next one? I do. Which one that you have? One or three. Okay, can you share your screen or I will do it because you, I you think you have it. a yes. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, yes. And going back. Okay. Nah. It's your turn. Okay. Um I think it's it's um sinus tachycardia. Yeah, that's a sinus tachycardia. We have P waves in front of it, and that's it. Tachycardic is around 100, 110. Nothing else. Nothing else. Very good. And the axis? Um it's normal. One positive, AVA positive, no more. And two is the biggest one, but after one, so it's meaning around 50. Period. Good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Number and four. Yes. Okay. The number is regular, and the heartbeat is my best, 250. Perfect. Okay, very good, very good. The lead two is basic, so, so the positive in ABR, so it's minus 30. Very good, very good. So it's sinus 30, so we can find uh... the period, so it's... Okay, that's good, but that's a T wave right here. That's a T. Okay, that's a T. That's a T. Oh. Okay. This is one thing. That these are not a P wave. This is not a P. That's a T wave. Okay, that's a T wave. Not another thing. You said mm -hmm. that the heart rate is very fast. The heart rate is around 200, 250 or something like that. It's very fast. This is why it cannot be sinus tachycardia. Because the sinus cannot fire at this rate. You have a maximum rate of the sinus that you can calculate, 210 minus the age, okay? okay? And at least, let's say, it's not a baby. Let's say at least maybe 20 years old, so it should be less than 200, not 190 or 200, the maximum rate. But you are not operating with this high rate. If you are running or doing some exercise, you still have maybe 160 or 170, but not faster, because the sinus cannot fire with this high rate, okay? okay? However, if you cannot fire with this rate, what else can be? Can be a paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. But we do not see any P waves. If you look at in V1, for example, well, okay, we don't see P wave. It can be junctional. Yeah. But you still don't see anything, but P wave can be inside the QRS complex. If you cannot decide whether this is originated from the atrium or from the junction, you can say that the supraventricular tachycardia. That's it. Anything else, but not from the ventricle. Supraventricular. That's it. Thank you. Possible that's a supraventricular paroxysmal tachycardia. And mostly is coming from the junction. Okay. Good. 105. Who has 105? That's me. Okay. I, I can't I can't share screen door. 
But I, I already shared. I already okay. shared my screen. Well, so what I want to say, it's a regular rhythm, mm -hmm. and it has about a heart rate of about sixty beats per minute. Mm -hmm. Uh, when looking at the axes, I noticed that the uh, equifacic is lead number two. No, no, no. That it's it, more the negative. It's a little bit more mm. negative than that two, okay? But the uh, AVL is positive. So that means that the axis is it's also it's a left deviation. But mm -hmm. this time, this time, because since you said lead, yeah, two, lead, since lead two is negative, that means that it's between uh, minus 30 and minus 60. So it's uh, okay, good, very it, good. It's a uh, patho pathological. And also, we can observe uh, the F waves in between each rhythm. It's a four to one conduction, the flutter waves. Uh -huh. the so these are capital F waves, flutter waves. Okay, very good. These are flutter waves. Okay, first of all, you can see the SAR waves very nicely. Another thing, the rate is less than 300 or around 300. This is how you know that it's flutter waves, okay? The atrial rate should be faster than 350, but that's an atrial flutter rhythmic four to one conduction. Very good. That was very, very nice. Okay, 106. Yes. Okay. And uh, so this is a uh, arrhythmic. Okay, good. And the heart rate is about 150. Okay. 150? I don't think so. Uh, this it, is it, not it, rhythmic. This is not rhythmic. If you look at, at the bottom, there's a rhythm strip. You can see that there are sometimes you do see this less than 150, but it's uh, 120. And after you have one, two, three, four, or this is around 70 or 60. So if you, again, if you follow the, the average, and if you say that, okay, let's start here. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Jesus Christ, too many. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, hundred. So the rate is the average rate is hundred. Pardon me. Yeah, uh, I can. I could hear some echoes only. Uh, and uh, sorry, I just wanted to share my screen, so I'm just leaving. Okay, share it. Can I? Okay, can I? Okay. Yes, it's yours. Can you see now? No. You have to give permission to your iPad or Apple computer. And after you have to log out and log back. Okay, then I'm just going to tell like this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm going to sh share my screen and you can tell me those stories, okay? And uh, I think this patient has a atrial flutter because... Very good, can... very good. We can see a saw tooth on the lead two and also lead, uh, lead two. Uh -huh. And then uh, the axis, I think it's a normal axis. Okay. Yes. Lead number three is equiphasic, so it's around 30. 30. So the... Um... And we do have atria flutter, but the conduction ratio is varies. Sometimes four to one, sometimes two to one. So this is why we do have an arrhythmia. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. Uh, let's see the next one is 107. That's me. Okay. Wrote everything in paper, so I'll just look at your screen. Good. Okay. So if you see it, I would say it's irregular. Mm -hmm. Yes. And... Um, for the heartbeat, heart rate, I 
calculated it was 43 um, beats per minute around ish. So maybe bradycardia. Mm, yeah, it's not maybe that's a bradycardia. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you want to approach a girl and say, maybe I like you. Not a good possible. idea. <laughs> no, for sure not. So it is bradycardia. Okay. And if you see on the last um last row, you see some of them are mostly it's a seven to one, but in the where your pointers are about five to one. Yeah, this so is again it, varies. Okay. So there is a conduction alteration, which well. is yes. the possibility of arrhythmia. Good. And um, since there is no P wave, I would say is atrial flutter. Ah, <laughs> great. <laughs> okay. And um, one access. Last, access, yes. Um, if you see lead one is the positive, and um, if you go to AVF on the third row, yes. Um, it's a slightly aquifacic, I would say. Close oh, positive, there. positive. That's a positive. I would say positive. I would say lead number three, a little bit negative, as you see, but close mm -hmm. to aquifacic or negative. And yeah. if you compare the size of the R wave in lead number one and two, lead number one is the biggest one. So that's meaning it's not 30, but maybe 20. Maybe 20. And this is why it's negative in lead number three. It's around 20. It's still yeah. normal. Yes, sir. Good, very good. 108. Wow. Uh, first is uh, not the rhythmic, and the heart rate is around 140. Mm -hmm. And uh, the axis, the lead one is positive, even if positive, so it's around normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I checked the uh, lead two is positive, so it's wrong. Like, uh, no, uh, the EVLs is aquiphysic, so the axis would be six degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so around 60, okay. And uh, I think it's atrial fibrillation because there's no P wave. Okay, well, very good, very good. Another thing, let's, and I, I'm going to magnify it, okay? I'm going to magnify it. Sometimes it looks like you do have some P waves, okay? For example, here, here, here. It, it's not the same P wave, not a run shape, not the same everywhere. But the rate is very fast. It's more than 300. This is why atrial fibrillation is the right answer, okay? Add AFib. You figure it out very nicely. Good. Very, very good. I'm proud of you. Good. Guys, you are great. 109. Have uh, you already had this one, I think? In the previous uh, uh, session. Yeah, did we have it? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I can show you the same ECG the next week and you won't recognize it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, it's arrhythmia, and uh, the beats per minute, if we look down at lead two, is around uh, 70 beats per minute. Mm -hmm. And so for the axis, it's a uh, left deviation. I use the equiphasic method. Mm -hmm. And I got from zero to minus 30, so it's... Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's lead uh, two, you're supposed to look at AVL. And if AVL is positive, then it's minus uh, 30. Which well, a little bit uh, less than minus 30, so minus minus 20, because lead number two is a little bit positive, more positive than negative. Oh. OK, doesn't matter. And it's arrhythmic. What do you think? Why? Uh... Do you see P waves? There's no P waves. So, so? it's atrial fibrillation. Correct. Great. Very good. Atrial fibrillation. All right. That was one. Okay. All right. Now, who has this? 110. Uh, professor? Yes. 
Uh, can I ask a few questions of the 104? Uh... Yes. Is it I misunderstand that P wave to the uh, wave? No, I, I don't see any P wave. Yeah, Basically, so, I cannot distinguish the P wave. This is what, however, you do yeah. see that the QRS is narrow and the T wave is positive. So mm -hmm. these beats are supraventricular <laughs> beats for sure. But because the rate is very fast, it's over 200, I cannot state that that's a sinus tachycardia. It could be atrial tachycardia or junctional tachycardia. However, because I cannot distinguish, I cannot find any P waves, I would say that's a supraventricular tachycardia. So it can be arterial fibrillation also? No, cannot be atrial fibrillation because that's rhythmic. This is rhythmic. So when we do see arrhythmia and no P wave, that atrial fibrillation for sure. But rhythmic one, never atrial fibrillation. Uh, not in the rhythm. Never rhythm. ever. Okay. Okay. If you do Thank see you. P waves, different P waves, and uh, the arrhythmia, that can be multifocal atrial tachycardia. Or you can see arrhythmia absoluta with sinus P wave, that the six sinus syndrome has the completely abnormal sinus impulse formation. But the rate is not as fast than this one, for sure. Thank okay, huh. 110, I think that was the last. Yeah, that's a nice one. Okay. 110, Mohamed. Uh, uh -oh. no, and who has 110? But we already discussed 109. So 110? Okay. If not, let's go 111. Well. Oh, that would be me. Yeah, it's a little bit pixel. Okay, a lot of pixels on it. Um, but you can find out very nicely. Oh, um, rhythmic or not? It's rhythmic. Very good. Um, I think it's normal axis using the quadrant method. Okay, because, very good. Yeah, okay. Um, but I wasn't really sure. I could be completely wrong, but I was I was like confused either whether it's atrial flutter or junctional escape rhythm. <laughs> Okay, that's a junctional escape written, as you see, because that's rhythmic. And this is not a flutter wave because it's very fast. If you look at lead number three, you can see some undulating baseline. So that's an atrial fibrillation and a junctional escape written. So somehow we had a complete block between the atrium and the ventricle. And from a inferior junction, we do have an escape written. So that's a tricky ECG. Okay, Sorry, I have a that's question. very fast. Yes. For this one, would the P wave be following the QRS? No, this P is it? independent from the QRS complex, completely the independent. Wave. Yeah, that's okay. not a P wave, that's a fibrillatory wave, so there's the F waves. Okay, this is not a nice P waves, that's a fibrillatory waves. Okay. But this is independent from the QRS because if uh, the F wave is driven the QRS that should be arrhythmic, but this is not arrhythmic, that's rhythmic. So this is why we said junctional escape written. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And the next one is, I think, 100 I and, yes? I have a question. What happened to the T waves? It's negative ischemic changes. You can see there's a negative T. So this is a negative T. Yeah, ischemia, yeah. So so how do you know it's a junctional escape rhythm? Because the rate and the width of the QRS is not wide. It's not a ventricular bit. If we had a ventricular escape rhythm, uh, I try to find you a ventricular. As... Look at that one. That's a ventricular bit. See? Wide and the T is inverted. That's a ventricular one. And here is relatively not wide, it's less than 0.1 second. We do have an inverted T that we should not have it, 
but because it's associated with ischemia, we can have an altered TV. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, I think 116. Nah, yes. Who has 116? Um, it's mine. Okay. Uh, so the it's rhythmic. Okay. okay. The heart rate is 30 beats per minute. Okay. Very um, good. The um, axis, I think it's right deviation. Okay, very good. And um, we can see the small P waves there. I think it's yes. radiocardia. It, no, not because we do have P waves, but because the RR intervals is very far from each other. This is uh, why yeah. it's the bradycardia. Bradycardia. Now, but do we have any connection between the P wave and the QRS complex? Connection between them? No. No, not at all. So no. that meaning we do have a ventricular escape rhythm and a complete block between the atrium and the ventricle. So how does the sinus bradycardia look? Yes, you do have a P followed by a QRS. And oh, you okay. always have a connection between the P, a P and a QRS. So the relationship between the P and the QRS is stable. Okay. So you have to have a connection between the P and the QRS. But here, mm -mm. So it's, Next what did you say? It's ventricular? Escape written. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, that should be 121. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So for this, um, by looking at the rhythm, it's... Mm -hmm. I think it's a ventricle tachycardia. And... Well, okay. But this is a little bit faster <clears throat> than a ventricular tachycardia because the rate is over three, uh, 300. So <clears throat> that's a ventricular flutter. <clears throat> ventricular flutter. It's very similar to the atrial flutter, except we do have now <clears throat> the flutter waves for the QRS. So this is why it's coming from the ventricle, not from the atrium, because in atrial flutter, you do have no more QRSs. However, mm -hmm. in ventricular flutter, you have only this undulating QRS complexes. Um, okay. For the paroxysmal ventricle cardia, it looks quite similar, but how do you... Well, but basically the rate is around 200, maximum 200, 250. Mm -hmm. And you do mm -hmm. see separately. It's almost, it's not exactly a sinus wave. So, but the rate is too fast. This is why I said it's a more uh, ventricular flutter. But you don't make big, big mistakes if you say there's a ventricular uh, paroxysmal tachycardia. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. 122, uh -huh. 122, anybody has? That's a ventricular fibrillation. You can say that's a ventricular fibrillation. The, the wave is different one, it's completely different. It's not the same, so it's shivering. And the cardiac output is Zero, okay, zero. There is no cardiac output when we do have ventricular fibrillation. And the last one is 126. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, so basically you can see that there's ventricular tachycardia there, but it's um, with like a changing amplitude. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. This was like polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, which is yes. towards that point. 
copy TV. Take it, take it, Correct. Yeah. Good. Very good. Very good. It's not too good having this kind of tachycardia, but you are right. Okay. Great. I'm very happy what you performed today. So congratulations. Congratulations.